So Tashi Delay, everybody, and welcome back this week four of our class. And so we start off this time with a lovely little teaching from uh, Pama Sambhava called Pointing Out the Staff at Pointing the Staff at the Old Man. And uh, I like this a lot. I thought I would just read it as a part of this and maybe make a couple of comments as we go begins, while the great master Padmasabhava was staying in Great Rock Hermitage at Samye, Sherab Gyapo Galpo of Nok, an uneducated 61-year-old man who had the highest faith and strong devotion to the master, served him for one year. All this while Nok did, didn't ask for any teachings, nor did the master give him any. When, after a year, the master intended to leave, Nak offered the, a mandala plate upon which he had placed a flower of one ounce of gold. Then he said, Great master, think of me with kindness. First of all, I am uneducated. Second, my intelligence is small. Third, I am old, so my elements are worn down. I beg you to give a teaching to an old man on the verge of death that is simple to understand can thoroughly cut through doubt, is easy to realize and apply, has an effective view, and will help me in future lives. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> help me out here. <laughs> okay. So the master pointed to his walking staff, he pointed his walking staff at the old man's heart and gave this instruction. Listen here, old man. Look into the awakened mind of your own awareness. It has neither form nor color, neither center nor edge. At first it has no origin, but is empty. Next it has no dwelling place, but is empty. At the end it has no destination, but is empty. This emptiness is not made of anything and is clear and cognizant. When you see this and recognize it, you know your natural face. You understand the nature of things. You have through doubts, the, you have cut through doubts about topics of knowledge. This awakened mind of awareness is not made out of any material substance. It is self-existing and inherent in yourself. This is the nature of things that is easy to realize because it is not to be sought for elsewhere. This is the nature of mind that does not consist of a concrete perceiver and something perceived to fixate on. It defies the limitations of permanence and annihilation. In it there is no thing to awaken. The awakened state of enlightenment is your own awareness that is naturally awake. In it there is no thing that goes to the hells Awareness is naturally pure. In it, there is no practice to carry out. Its nature is naturally cognizant. This great view of the natural state is present in yourself. Resolve that it is not to be sought for elsewhere. So you're really capturing a lot of the essence of, of the view. When you understand the view in this way, you want to apply it in your experience. Wherever you stay is the mountain retreat of your body. So you don't need to go off for some special retreat. It's your body. Whatever external appearance you perceive is naturally occurring appearance and a naturally empty emptiness. Let it be free from mental constructs. Naturally freed appearances become your helpers and you can practice while taking appearances as the path. Within whatever moves in your mind, whatever you think has no essence but is empty. Thought occurrences are naturally freed. When remembering your mind essence, you can take thoughts as the path and practice is easy. As for the innermost advice, mo no matter what kind of disturbing emotion you feel, look into the emotion and it tracelessly subsides. The disturbing emotion is thus naturally freed. This is simple to practice. When you, pra when you can practice in this way, your meditation training is not confined to sessions. 
When you know that everything is a helper, your meditation experience is unchanging. The innate nature is unceasing, and your conduct is unshackled. Wherever you stay, you are never apart from the innate nature. In other words, everything is meditation. It doesn't matter what you're doing, what you're thinking, or anything else, everything is meditation. Once you realize this, your material body may be old, but awakened mind doesn't age. It knows no difference between young and old. The innate nature is beyond bias and partiality. When you recognize that awareness, innate wakefulness is present in yourself. There is no difference between sharp and dull faculties. When you understand that the innate nature, free from bias and partiality, is present in yourself, there is no difference between great and small learning. Even though your body, the support for the mind, falls apart, the dharmakaya of awareness wisdom is unceasing. When you gain stability in this unchanging state, there is no difference between a long and a short lifespan. Old man, practice the true meaning. Take the practice to heart. Don't mistake words and meaning. Don't part from your friend, diligence. Embrace everything with mindfulness. Don't indulge in idle talk and pointless gossip. Don't become involved in common aims. Don't disturb yourself with the worry of offspring. Don't excessively crave food and drink. Intend to die an ordinary man. Your life is running out, so be diligent. Practice this instruction for an old man on the verge of death. So he very, very concisely brings all of that together as well as even some of the, the relative kinds of vows here at the end, uh, some things that we should do and follow as a part of our practice. Now in Dzogchen, of course, there are no rules, but that doesn't mean you can just do anything. It means that you've transcended the need for rules. Okay? So you don't have to have rules to tell you what to do, what's appropriate, and what's not appropriate to do. Question, yes. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure whether I asked this last week in the same way or not, uh, but, but I just heard, one piece of what I just heard was Whatever shows up, just be there with it. Just look. Now, that's slightly different, it's quite a bit different from what we talked about on Thursday, which is just relax the mind. Mm -hmm. and in other words, it's not focusing in any way on any of the manifestations. It's just relaxing the mind and that's a different technique to, to be there than focusing on the manifestations and just being with it. No, actually there's not different. What? <laughs> actually it's not different. Well, you're, well, resting, you're resting your mind, okay? You're just relaxing your mind yes. and whatever comes up, comes up. That's right. That's exactly the same thing. Whatever comes up, comes up. So there really is no difference between the two. Saying relax your mind into that state adds on to it perhaps in terms of the description, but there's really no difference in terms of what you do with the relaxed mind. You just rest in that state. You rest in, but it's I a mean, natural state. But I, what I didn't hear as he was describing it was the just resting in the moment. That's true. He did not say that. That's that right. doesn't make it different. No, no, this, is a, it up. this is a very concise thing, so you can't say everything, okay? So, but there really is no difference. They're the same. Because when you just rest the mind, even though there's an awareness that there's maybe things coming up. It's so in the background, you don't even know what it's saying. You know what I mean? It's, it's not like it, it's kind of strong focus at yeah. all. But remember, in Dzogchen, it's all mind. Mm 
I'm Whatever not, it is. Sorry, no, that, that's not the question. Okay, let me finish. Yeah. Okay, it's all mind. So whether that is something that comes up as what we refer to as a manifestation, or whether that's in the background, but that's still a subtle manifestation. Yes. And so it doesn't matter. And the difference between that and Rikpa is that they're just two different characteristics of one mind. Okay? So everything is a part of that. So what he's saying here is that uh, everything is a helper. Your meditation experience is unchanging. So it doesn't matter. What you're doing or not doing, it's unchanging. There's just one. The innate nature is unceasing, and your conduct, that's the manifestations and what you do, is unshackled. So you're free of, of all of that. So it's, there is no difference between the two. It's just one. Okay? Let's, let's go on to the next one here. A, a, a dear treasure for destined disciples by His Holiness Dujum Rinpoche. And I thought in this one I would at least read the opening line here. Uh, he pays homage to the Guru Padmakara, the great master of Uddiyana, which of course is Padmasambhava. Do not resolve the Dharma, resolve your mind. To resolve your mind is to know the one which frees all. Not to resolve your mind is to know all but lack the one. And that really captures the essence. The, the idea is that you need to deal with mind, not the teachings per se. Okay? Focus on it in terms of what's going on in your mind. So in this, uh, he goes on uh, to say things like keep your body erect, let your breath flow, flow naturally, gaze into the sky, Supplicate your root teacher, mingle your mind with his, and rest in equanimity. So that's the same thing, just rest your mind, okay? And your mind is the same as the guru, it's all the same as what we've done before. And then your mind will not remain in the state empty of cognizant awareness for long. Why not? Well, it's mind. What does mind do? It happens. It becomes restless, disturbed. It becomes like a monkey. It's not the mind essence. It's thinking. And it's what causes samsara. And so he talks about, well, we need to focus on awareness. So what is awareness? What's meant by awareness? He says awareness is empty, utterly empty totally open, spacious, and blissful. It's never made of something. It pervades all. It's intrinsic and lies beyond effort and concepts. So sometimes we try to put effort, and certainly in the other practices that we've done, there's a fair amount of effort involved. But again, here it is resting your mind, just relaxing into that state without effort. And then when you recognize it, your mind, the awareness, then it's like a dream. It's impossible to separate yourself from the awareness itself. Okay? So it's not like two different things. It just is. <clears throat> when you rest nakedly and naturally in the great openness of this awareness, do not be concerned with thinking. Instead, Abide in the space of awareness, which is like a cloudless sky. Thinking is lost to awareness. So the more you're focused on the awareness, the less thoughts are going to come up. And so you just let yourself rest in that state. It's not a real concentrated focus like in shamatha, where you're really focused on a specific object. But the effect is somewhat the same. The more you focus on an object, the less thoughts come up. But at this point in your training, it's easier to just relax into that and the thoughts melt away so that you don't have the thoughts either. So first it's pointed out by the master and we decide on the one thing, which is awareness itself. You begin to gain confidence in that. And then he says, you may say it's sufficient not to meditate. No, that's ridiculous. 
<laughs> you haven't arrived at the state of liberation simply by recognizing awareness. That's the beginning, just the beginning. And if we get caught up in that and we get conceptually thinking about that, of course, then we wind up creating karma and suffering and so forth. So he says, practice sustaining the continuity of the awareness and nothing other than that. So you want to kind of sustain that. And then he quotes Longchenpa, you may have recognized your nature, but unless you become familiar with it, the enemy, thinking, will carry you off like an infant on a battlefield. An infant wouldn't have much hope on a battlefield. Okay. So generally speaking, he says, the word meditation means to sustain the continuity of awareness with natural and innate mindfulness. Resting, again, key word, resting in undistracted non-fixation compared to shamatha where you're fixating on something and growing accustomed to the innate nature. So you're just resting, relaxing and getting into that nature. If a thought arises, just let it arise. If no thought arises, rest in its non-arising. So as things come up, you just let them abide and go. If you get fixated on it, start thinking about the thought, now you're at a whole other level. And that gets in the way of being able to do this. After a while, you begin to have more and more subtle thoughts this kind of a, calls it an undercurrent of thought. And this acts as a sneak thief during your meditation. So place your mindfulness on guard and keep continuity. And then you can continue it, whether you're eating, sleeping, walking, to sitting, meditating, post-meditation, everything. You can go ahead and do that. Now, of course, living our daily lives from time to time, we do need to think. You know, I am in an occupation as a professor where I have to do a lot of thinking as a part of that. And so it's important that that be in the foremost of my mind at that time. But you can also at the same time put it in the context. There's no difference between that and Rikpa. It's all the same if you recognize it's all the same. And you can be aware of that all the time. Then it's one and the same. If you don't meditate, you don't gain certainty. If you do meditate, certainty will be attained. So you can't just read about this and assume it's going to happen. You have to do the practice. Meditate with strong diligence. Gradually grow more relaxed. Duality will naturally vanish. Gold and stone are equal. Food and shit are equal. Gods and demons are equal. Good and evil are equal. Buddha realms and hell realms are equal. In this context, it's beyond. They're just concepts. The concept of good, the concept of bad, they're both still just concepts. Okay? And so he then quotes Pabakara again here, Pabasabhava. My view is higher than the sky, but my cause and effect of karma is finer than powder. And you've heard that quote or something similar to that many times now. Lay your foundation with pure faith, devotion, and samaya. Work with diligence. Meditate after completely setting aside all pointless activities of this life. And one of the things you can ask yourself is, how do you waste time right now? You know, what kind of things are you doing right now that are a waste of time that could be applied to meditation? Okay, and we all do it. All of us have moments of time that we use for mindless kinds of things. And so when we say, I don't have time, you better check and make sure <laughs> that you're using every single moment of time in some kind of a useful way before you say, I don't have time. Because we literally all have exactly the same amount of time. Whether we're Padmasambhava, or Avalokiteshvara, or His Holiness the Dalai Lama, or Joe Schmo, we all have exactly 24 hours a day. And so, it's what we do with those 24 hours 
that counts. That's really the important part. So that's kind of the essence of that brief little teaching by Papa Sabava. In, in its very simple way, no matter what you're doing, if you are doing, if you also just at the same time just resting in the fullness of whatever, you're practicing. That's, as Kempo would, uh, Kenshin Lama would say, exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're in both and. It's both and. It's not either or. They can get stuck in the idea of this or that. No, it's both and at the same time. Yeah. So the next chapter, chapter 15. Um, oh, question? Yes. Well, and then, but this Prince Mindfulness on God, how do we really understand it? Well, the idea is that the focus is awareness, being aware, mm -hmm. which is very similar to mindfulness when we're talking in the Dzogchen context. Now, in the path of individual liberation, we differentiate between the two, where mindfulness is your focus on an object, and awareness is knowing whether you are mindful. Okay, but in here the words become used pretty much interchangeably. It's mindfulness and awareness, pretty much the same thing. And so what we're talking about is that you you want to be paying, even though you're relaxed, mm -hmm. you still need to be paying attention. If all you're doing is re being relaxed, then you're not doing it properly. So you have to be aware, and that's like with Buddha nature, we talk about luminous emptiness, and the idea is that luminosity aspect is being aware of the emptiness. And so if you just relax into an empty nothingness, you know, that's, that's not the state that you're after. You have to be aware, you have to be mindful of what's going on as you do that. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. To be aware of being aware. Yes. <laughs> okay. And the other thing is, I mean, that quote, uh, I mean, you said is, yeah, uh, at, not at the end, but in the other page, uh, one on one, it says, my view is higher than the sky, but the cause and effect of karma is finer than karma. Right. Um, how do you really understand this? I mean, he's saying that my view is so high, does it mean that you cannot really reach it or you need to look up? And then cause and effect of karma is finer than power. Does it mean that it's so fine that you cannot really avoid it? Yeah, it's uh, the the wording in this particular translation is a little bit different than it's usually given, which is my view is broad as vast as space. Okay. So the first part refers to the view aspect. Okay. So the view is okay. transcendent, okay, and then the second part uh, is usually translated as something like, but my behavior. Now here it's translated as cause and effect of karma, but my behavior is as fine as barley flour. Mm -hmm. And in, in Dzogchen, so he's saying, well, I don't violate any of the vows. You know, I follow the vows and so forth, even though I have this broad view. And in Dzogchen we say there are no rules, okay, and which can lead to the assumption, well, you can do whatever you want. But he's saying, no, I follow the rules but in Dzogchen, one way to think of that is that there are no rules, but you don't need rules at that point. You've transcended the need for rules. Okay? It doesn't mean that you're misbehaving. Mm -hmm. It means that you've transcended the need for that, regardless of what your behavior is. 
Yes, does, it, does it also mean that the unity of your um, of your mind is such that um, you have a fine perception of how what would be skillful means in terms of your behavior? Right. Now, skillful means in Dzogchen can be a little bit different than it can in other contexts, but you're right. I mean, yeah, yeah it's, yeah, it's because at this point in time, when, when you've reached a point where you really do have this broad view of things and understanding that there is no difference between good and bad, then you get to a point where it doesn't really matter what you do, because you can't create any negative karma at that point, no matter what you do. But, as a yogi or a master or something like that, just try going about doing that and see what happens. You know, there are going to be consequences, if not for you, for a lot of other people. And so, if you do something that then upsets everybody else in the Sangha, and everybody says, well, I'm not going to go to that Sangha anymore, have you done something that's really benefiting other beings? So that's the kind of thing that we need to keep into account as we look at this. We can say, okay, yeah, there are no rules and I can do whatever I want, but if you really have transcendent wisdom, you are aware not only of yourself, but even more so perhaps of others. And so you're really paying attention to how what you do affects other others and how they interpret that and so forth. So it, in that sense you have to, to be much more careful, not in a, in a um, deliberate way, it's because you've gotten yourself to a point where you don't have, it just happens, you know, that's just, just the way you are naturally. Okay. So, um, I, I, 